that your first idea for Avatar came to you in a dream when you were 19. Can you tell us about this dream? Well, it was really just an image or a series of images uh, with a bioluminescent forest with purple moss underfoot. When you stepped on it, it lit up and, you know, a glowing river filled with bioluminescent animals and, you know, uh, even down to the little flying lizards that spin around. It was kind of all there, but it was just an image. It wasn't a story. There was no story yet. You know, so I painted that and I kept it in the back of my mind. And then years later in 1995, when I sat down to write what I thought of as, you know, a planet story, something that took place in another world, those images came back and I incorporated them into the, to the story that became Avatar. The first Avatar was released 13 years ago. Did you change the script of this new movie throughout the years in a wake of the climate crisis? Not really. The, the script, the, the new story for, the, for uh, the Way of Water and then, you know, movie three, movie four, and movie five, the story evolved in 2013, 2014 with the writers. Okay, so I put together a room of writers and we worked with whiteboards and we worked out the whole story from end to end, all, all five, you know, all, all uh, four sequels. Um, and it really hasn't changed since then. It was refined over the next two years. We began shooting in 2017. I don't think I really thought about how the world will have changed by the time the, the movie actually landed, you know, but of course it has. We look at ch climate change differently. It's not over the horizon. It's here now, you know. There's a lot more angst and anxiety about it. Peter, people are better informed. Uh, of course, the good news is that uh, the way of water is not really about climate change. It's about the ocean, yeah. uh, you know. So the emphasis changed from the rainforest, which was about, you know, rainforest, uh, uh, indigenous culture, uh, biodiversity loss, all the things that are happening in, let's say, Brazil or Central Africa, that sort of thing around our world. The focus now is on the ocean. So the ocean is worldwide. That's a global, a global problem, a global issue. But I would say the movie is not... It's not kind of thumping the Bible about, about uh, you know, about environmental issues. It's just, it's just there. It's just, it's just challenging the viewer to feel something for a, a pristine, beautiful world that's being systematically destroyed, which is really what we're doing on our own, our own world. It's all a metaphor. Showing the ocean, the way you show it, it kind of shocks the audience in comparison to how the ocean is now today. Yes. Well, there are places in the ocean even now, even after it's been degraded and so much of the fish have been taken out of the ocean by us, there are still places now that are quite beautiful and have quite profuse, you know, biomass and high diversity. Some of the reefs in the Western Pacific are still great. But our coral reefs, if we keep going the way we are going, within the next 50 years, we won't have coral reefs. They just won't exist anymore, uh, at least alive. There'll be dead coral coral reefs. And so this is something that's worth fighting for. So what we show is that beauty that we still have here in places that we used to have everywhere, but that we still have enough that we can preserve it if we accept that challenge. Do you think that it is part of your job as an artist to speak up about social and environmental issues and to try to raise awareness with your audience? I think different artists define their roles differently. Some artists are not concerned at all with, with social or, or immediate issues in the world. Others uh, are concerned, such as myself, are concerned, but they do it through the lens of entertainment and fantasy, science fiction. We step outside ourselves. We go to another world so that we can look back at our, our values and the things that are important to us. That's what I would like to do. And then other filmmakers just go straight at the problem and they make a movie about that problem, you know, whether it's racism or, you know, gender bias or whatever, whatever it is. Do you hope that you might influence your audience action with your movies? And do you think that movies can change the world? I think cinema changes the world every day. I think it's always changed the world, you know, television, cinema, whenever we come together to share ideas as an artist and an audience of that, of that artist. We're in a dialogue. We're talking about things. We're working our stuff out. You know, it's, it's therapeutic. But, you know, I think it's also important for any filmmaker to understand the limitations of what a film can do. The first thing, the first and highest priority is get the audience to care about your characters and their problems. You know, so this movie isn't really about climate change. It's not even mentioned. It's about the oceans but it's primarily about family, 
and the dysfunction of family, the conflict in family, how family is a strength. Uh, you know, so I wanted to make it something that was universal, that anybody anywhere on the planet could, could relate to. Mm -hmm.